Beginning in early 1916, Australian soldiers in the Light Horse, the Imperial Camel Corps, the Australian Flying Corps, AFC, and a myriad of smaller supporting units formed part of the Egyptian Expeditionary Force, EEF. The number of Australian horsemen who fought in the campaigns was dwarfed by the numbers of British and Indian troops who served in the EEF's two infantry corps and its artillery regiments, air squadrons and transport and support services. The EEF's first role was to secure the Suez Canal by driving the Ottoman army out of the Sinai Peninsula and then later in 1917 its role was to remove the enemy from Palestine territory that's largely modern Israel, and ultimately Syria, actions that also ended Ottoman control of Arabia and Mesopotamia, modern Iraq. The Light Horse, the Australian Camelliers, and the Airmen from No. 1 Squadron, AFC, were at the forefront of action in the sandy desert of the Sinai and were prominent at the battles of Gaza. They took part in the advance into Palestine, fighting on its rugged plains and hills around Jerusalem and in the freezing cold of the hills east of the Jordan River. There is little doubt that the fighting in Palestine was more mobile and statistically less dangerous than that on the Western Front. However, the campaign included all the developments of modern war, with new weapons and techniques like gas, tanks, aircraft and massed indirect artillery fire all used. In the quiet little town of Bagalia, part of the Maruya district on the New South Wales south coast, is a small memorial to a few men who enlisted from the region. It's a typical little Australian town that adorns a small plaque commemorating those who served in the Great War. One of the names holds special memories in the heart of relatives and the community of Badala. His name was Herbert Frederick Hutchings, known as Fred or Uncle Fred. Fred Hutchings was the son of a cheesemaker, Charles Herbert Hutchings from Bagalia. Charles Herbert Hutchings um, was the uh manager and secretary of the Bagalia Cheese Factory uh, Cooperative. There was a gentleman who was uh, the original manager but he was only in the job for about four or five months and then um, uh, Charles Herbert Hutchings took over that role until the day he passed away. So uh, cheese making was a big part of our family history. Um, uh, Benjamin Charles Hutchings was also a cheesemaker. Uh, he worked at the factory there. He then moved up the coast and then come back uh, at the end. But um, cheesemaking is, is a big part of, of our family history. Um, and the Bagalia Cheese Factory then led on to um, the Bedala Cheese Factory. And uh, Mum and I have fond memories of, of going down there when I was a kid to the, to the 
I suppose we call it the new Badawa Cheese Factory. <laughs> um, and you know, getting the curds and whey and watching them make the cheese and all that stuff. It was just, just great memories, great memories. Fred enlisted in October 1915. Like many farmers from the area, Fred was a competent horseman and shooter, but he also had many other skills. Uh, when he joined um, at Holsworthy, uh, when he signed up, uh, first of all he signed up to the 6th Light Horse. Um, and I think he was with the 6th Light Horse for maybe 6 to 12 months and then he transferred to the field engineers. So I can only imagine that they seen some quality. Uncle Fred was then a member of, of rifle clubs, so was his brother. Um, uh, Benjamin Charles shot for the King's Prize. Um, my grandfather was also a target shooter. Um, he won the Queen's Prize in 1964 in at the old Liverpool rifle range. I'm also a target shooter. So I set up about five, five generations of, of target shooters. Um, I've represented our state and I'm just about to represent our country in America as well next year. So um, that's a proud history that, uh, that I hold dear to me. Can I just say something about the hunting? I don't want people to get the wrong idea because hunting was never native animals. Hunting was rabbits and the rabbits were only used for food. food. We used to soak the rabbits overnight in salty water and then they were made into a beautiful casserole for the next day for food. So nothing was ever killed just for the sake of killing it. No. Um, as Michael to this day would never kill an animal because he's a target shooter. It's something I want young people to understand that it's not, that's not what it's about, it's just a sport. I can remember when I was seven, my father took us to England and um, we were there for nine months. And while we were gone, Uncle Fred was looking after our home at Bankstown. And my father had a business um, in Bankstown and Uncle Fred would help with that. But when we got home, attached to my father's garage was a huge big workshop that Uncle Fred had built in that nine months. <laughs> And it was all set up with all the tools and everything was done, ready for Dad when he come home. No council permission. No, <laughs> no, you, don't, you don't do that. Um, so that was the sort of thing he would just do at the spur of the moment. I need something and a shed here or I need to put a new toilet over there. He built his own um, toilet, the flushing toilet at Badala. Fred Hutchings' first tenure was with the 2nd and 6th Australian Light Horse Regiments. Fred was based in Egypt and served in Australia's little recognised Palestine campaign. We have found a photo just today uh, of Uncle Fred um, sitting beside his horse. The horse is sitting down on the ground and, and Uncle Fred sitting beside his horse and, and I suppose their horse was, was, was their, their companion, their soulmate. Um, it took them to battle, it brought them back home again. Um, so their horse was everything. Uh, I've even got a, a, a drawing of um, uh, Uncle Fred's horse, which is hand drawn, uh, with its feed uh, bag um, around its head. Um, so, you know, to even sit down and take the time to draw your horse feeding, um, it must have been something very special for him. Um, and it would have been so sad that they couldn't bring their, their mate back home with them. It was soon discovered Fred had a talent with engineering work, drawing, designing and building, as his diary pages and letters reveal. In mid-1917, Fred Hutchings was transferred to Australian Engineering Corps No. 1 Field Engineers. That's when you know, the, the designing of, of things to blow up railways and the drawings are, uh, are in the uh, Maria Historical Society um, of sleds and all these types of things. So he would have also learnt a lot being part of that um, and, and brought those skills back home again. 
His division was responsible for designing an improved type of ambulance sled for the Light Horse Mounted Division and also extensive documents on how to blow up a railway line. The role of Sapper during World War I was incredibly dangerous. Their role in the AIF was none less important as infantrymen or light horse. They often constructed bridges and railway under heavy fire. They were also there to problem solve and offer alternatives to command on how to proceed under extremely dangerous conditions. But never underestimate the inventiveness of Australians either. Um, there's an argument of a, friend, a fellow historian, a friend of mine in, in Adelaide, makes all the time. We don't think about this very much, and the, the fellow's name's gone out of my head, but he invented a device that enabled our side, the Allies side, to find out precisely where that gun on the other side was firing from. Now, not within a range of, but precisely. He could, it's like a GPS today. It could precisely say where it was, which meant you could destroy it. And my friend argues that that more or less won the war for the Allies, that, in, that invention. Uh, and I don't say that all engineers were inventive, but many were. And the interesting thing about engineers, and I've, I've known quite a few engineers in the army, um, not in combat conditions, of course, but um, they're problem solvers. They're the people, engineers are the people who dissect a problem. They can see an impediment to progress or whatever. They pull the problem apart and come up with one or two or three or four solutions and then offer them to those in charge. We, would, we were talking before about the various roles of the, of the AIF. Well, don't underestimate the importance of engineers um, because uh, they're trained thinkers and um, you don't get anywhere, even in an army of the First World War, without the most careful thought possible. And, and that's what engineers are trying to do. It's, uh, you, you know, in, in that diary, there's, there's one of a, a, um, a, a boot maker, and, and it's all hand drawn in lead pencil, you know, and so detailed of a boot maker at, at Port Said, uh, sitting there making, making boots and, you know, landscapes of, of the desert and, uh, and and different peoples. I think one of his mates, Reg, he's drawn a, um, a picture of him as well. So they must have meant a lot to him and, and just um, uh, Uncle Fred's skill um, of, of drawing and, um, you know, that was his way of telling a story. Um, he drew the story. He didn't write it, he drew it. And I think that's beautiful. And to be able to, uh, to, be able to have that um, is, uh, you know, to be able to pass that on to my kids and then their kids is, and, you know, keep that tradition going and that, that story going um, is very, very special. Very, very special. And my father was a, a great illustrator. He, when he, he got that from Uncle Fred, he, when he'd write a letter, there was always a picture in the corner of the weather that day, whether it was sunny or there would be a man walking along with an umbrella, and Uncle Fred used to do that with letters. Always through his letters there were illustrations when he, particularly if he wrote a letter to me, I would have um, illustrations through the, through the letter. And, his artistic skills have come through to my father was a beautiful artist, he painted, and I've got the skill of being a watercolourist. So it's come through, it amazes me the generations of things that come through that was special to a man in the First World War, and perhaps his father and maybe his father before him have come through all these generations. It just is fascinating. He, whenever he, like, he would go and mow the lawn with his first um, motorised Victor mower and cut his toe almost off with the blade because he had a pair of old things on his feet that shouldn't have been on there. And I had to treat, I had to get that better because he wouldn't go to hospital. But the next thing was we had a phone call to say he was in hospital. He'd been cutting always cut the wood with a circular saw and he pulled the, the wood back and the saw cut 
those fingers and the thumb off completely. And he called Auntie Ella, his sister, and said, I've done something stupid, Ella. And when she saw it, she couldn't believe her eyes because that part of his hand was on the, the circular saw bench. She wrapped it up in tea towels and he said, I'm going to hospital to Maruya from Badala. He got to Badala and knew he couldn't drive any further because he was bleeding, so they had to get an ambulance. For the rest of his life, he used those two fingers like you have never seen anybody use two mm. fingers. He was amazing, wasn't he, Michael? He was. He did everything that he did before with those two fingers. And he th that's why we were so mesmerised by this man, because nothing stopped him. They were made of stuff we are not made of today. No. It was just such an era of strength and, oh, look, when I think about that, it just astounds me because he got over that so fast and got back to doing everything as normal. He just said, I was a stupid old man. I did something I knew I shouldn't do. I mean, that's a huge injury, really. You're left with two, those two fingers on a hand. Was that on his left hand? Yes, or his, right his left hand. hand but he used his knife and fork like we would use it and nothing, nothing changed, nothing changed. He was astounding. Mm. Incredibly. My crazy. hero, really. Mm. Him and my father were my heroes. Fred's construction skills, old world charm and generosity are rarely found in individuals today. This made him special to the local community and to his family, and even more reason to remember Herbert Frederick Hutchings. A plaque is located on his brother's grave, Benjamin Charles Hutchings, at Maruya Cemetery. Lest we forget. When I left after cleaning his house, and I always tended to his feet and any cuts he had I'd look after and so on, when I would leave and I always called in to say goodbye Uncle Fred, give him a big hug and a cuddle, and he, as we were parting, he would throw an envelope into the car and going along, you'd open the envelope and it would be full of money. He was just... Very generous. 